Welcome to this episode of Nursing Edge Unscripted, Saga, where we journey through the history of nursing education using stories that connect the past to the present and then our future as we reimagine our teaching, learning, and scholarship. It is often said that the past teaches us about the present. To study history is to study change. This year, Saga gives voice to nursing through the words of our early nurse leaders who organized a discipline and carved out systems to formalize the education of nurses throughout the United States. In their words, illuminates the visionary work of NLN pathfinders who questioned traditional curriculum paradigms and in the process, co-created standards for nursing education to build the discipline of nursing. In part one, we explored the beginnings of curriculum reform orchestrated by the newly formed American Society of Superintendents of Training Schools for Nurses. Focus was on caring for and about students and improving the work conditions of student nurses and graduates. Equally important to the society was the development of a standard curriculum that advanced theory and practical knowing and that established the roots of contemporary ethical practice. Part two will focus on efforts to formalize training school curricula and teacher training during the society's first decade. Finding the right balance between theory and practice challenged the superintendents. In 1897, at the fourth annual meeting of the society, President Agnes Brennan called for a new understanding of the theory practice dilemma. Quote, a theoretical nurse performs her duty in a perfunctory manner and may carry out the doctor's orders to the letter, but the patient recognizes there is something lacking, and we know that the skilled touch, the deft handling, the keenness to detect changes in symptoms, good judgment can be acquired only by much practice. And a good nurse without these attributes, despite her wide theoretic knowledge, will never be a successful one. Theory fortifies the practical. Practice strengthens and retains the theoretical, end quote. This idea was revolutionary to combine knowledge acquisition and scholarship with practical training especially in an age when women's work was not valued and the moral integrity of nurses' work was not fully established. To balance theory with practice in an emerging yet embryonic nursing curricula would require specialized teacher training. In 1898, at the fifth annual meeting of the society, Mrs. Hampton Robb spoke about the requirements for members of the society to teach in the new training schools and the need for specialized teacher training. At the time, the prevailing belief was that graduation from a quality training school was sufficient preparation to teach. In her words, quote, the position of superintendent of nurses requires a woman of executive ability education, tact, refinement, and keen perceptions. It is so important that she should have had a thorough course in the theory of her work. But a woman might possess all of these qualities and still be at a disadvantage when undertaking her first school for the simple reason that she does not necessarily know the best methods of presenting to others or of teaching her subjects. It is necessary for those who intend to teach to have a further course in a school of pedagogy where they may supplement the knowledge they have acquired by learning the principles and the best methods of teaching, end quote. Mrs. Hampton Robb's thinking was extraordinary. To execute this plan, the society formed an education committee led by Ms. M. Adelaide Nutting, now superintendent of the Johns Hopkins Training School. 
Together, she and Mrs. Hampton Robb set out to find a university to prepare superintendents to teach. This was extraordinary since at the time, women, especially nurses, did not go to college. Yet in 1899, Ms. Nutting and Mrs. Hampton Robb prevailed upon Dean James Russell of Teachers College, Columbia University, to open its doors to graduate nurses to lay the foundation for the training of teachers and public health nurses. In 1923, on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the society, now the National League of Nursing Education, Ms. Nutting spoke of this transformative event. Quote, one is tempted to wonder if the decisive moment in our educational progress may not have come unseen and unrecognized on the day when part of the education of nurses passed out beyond the hospital and into the university, end quote. So much had been accomplished in the first decade of the society. Its leaders recognized the need to formalize the training of nurses and nurse educators and carved a new pathway for nurses and for nurse graduates to be valued for their special knowledge and preparation. Join us next month as we continue the story of the evolution of nursing education and nursing curriculum reform during the early 20th century. And so the saga continues, and may our saga continue as we bring to a close this episode of Nursing Edge Unscripted, Saga. Thank you for joining us. And remember, good teaching doesn't just happen. Find your fit, push the boundaries, and celebrate the ahas. <laughs>